Yo guys, what is up? I'm the boy 21 here, and today we're gonna be doing reacting to scary stories. Now get your blankets, get whatever comforts you. We're not gonna be watching an hour and 40 minutes of this. We're just gonna be watching it for about 10 minutes, and then we're gonna get Rob Sean up for the video. Hope you enjoy, and guys, um, if you feel any discomfort watching this, then leave if you want. I don't really care. Um, this is for fun for other people who want to see this. So, just to let you know, this is scary. Um, I prefer you being uncomfortable watching this. If you're not comfortable and your friend's just telling you to do this, just do whatever you want. And let's get on to the video. Okay, this is already creepy. This happened when I was in college. I was 20 at the time, studying for an upcoming exam in biology. Nerd. That is, until my roommate busted in my room. She wasn't yelling, but I could see she was drunk by her excitement. Uh oh. I rolled my eyes and sighed. I completely lost focus now. But it was okay. Drunk. I'd kind of gotten used to her behavior. So she was weird. a party girl while I was, well, a nerd. I tried to get back on my reading ah, tracks again, but she patted me on the back and drunkenly giggled before speaking. Come on, Jasmine. Every time I see you, you're always reading a book. I sighed before speaking. And every time I see you, you Pretty smell cool. alcohol awesome. and vomit. She frowned at me. How about this? I'll be quiet all week if you come to this party tomorrow at 8. I what wanted to say no, but then I thought about it. I mean... I do always work really hard. Besides, she won't barge in like this for the whole week? Sounds too good, I thought to myself. So, I nodded and continued to read. We got ready. I hadn't dressed up in ages, so I was kind of excited. The party was loud, filled with drunk people making out, bumping and dancing. Yeah. The party was hosted in a basement-like setting. Only, it was much bigger and had a lot of space. I'm not going to lie. I did have a few drinks. I wasn't okay. drunk, but I was definitely tipsy. Yeah, I know. So, yeah. as my view became tilted, I, I didn't mean I, this guy I comes got out drunk. of nowhere and has small hmm? talk with me. He was fairly attractive. He didn't seem drunk. We met and exchanged names. From what I remember, he had red dyed hair and blue eyes. He was white and about six feet. His name was Luke. We laughed Hello. and talked about topics like studying and books and that kind of thing. The talking went on for about a half an hour. Okay. He then said, Hey, I'm going to get another drink. Want anything? And I said, why not? I mean, I'm having fun. See, don't so get drunk later on, he came too. back with drinks. And the next thing I remember, we were making out in the corner of the party room. Yeah. It was so quick. And then he asked me, Want to go back to my place? Which I politely declined. I already know what he wants. Besides, I needed to be on campus in the morning. Come on, I promise it will be fun. I remember that he kept on trying to get me to go, but he gave up after I made it clear I wasn't interested in going to his place. Okay, he I rolled his eyes him. angrily and gave me a paper with a number on it. Fine. If you change your mind, give me a call. He leaned close to me and whispered against my ear. Then he walked out. And the rest okay. of the night was a okay, complete blank. Okay, the it. next day, I woke up inside my college bedroom, on my bed, next to my roommate snoring on her bed as Is well. She drunk? As I got up to shower, a paper fell out of my pocket. It was the number, which made me remember that guy. But I had more important things now. Yeah, I showered then and went to study. Nerd. I remember reading my book when all of a sudden I felt dizzy. Hmm? Then I woke up in the bed with police officers and what? nurses talking next to me. Turns out, I had this dangerous allergic reaction that could only be caused from saliva or any bodily fluids that had come from decaying or rotting flesh. Mm. Which, to my surprise, was weird. Mm. I hadn't been kissing anyone, let alone ate anything raw. Then I remembered the guy. I told the police about the guy at the party and gave them the number he gave me. A few weeks passed and my allergies went down so I could live my life normally. Okay. I just finished my test when my phone rang. I answered it, and it was the police. Turns out the guy from the party had two dead, decaying women's bodies inside his apartment that he ate. They must have been there for months. My heart dropped. The thought that I made out was someone who ate human flesh, or even worse, was what if I had agreed to come to his place? Oh my! He may have been one of those bodies. 
Ew. I astral projected into. When I was in the seventh grade, I heard about astral projection for the first time and thought the idea seemed pretty cool. Who wouldn't want an out of body experience and travel around the world? Anyways, I've been attempting it for several months to no avail. I did doubt it wasn't real and eventually stopped attempting it. Then one day out of January, I decided to hit the bed at around 7 p.m. to take a nap, and the next second I began to feel I was being pulled out of my body as a strong vibration feeling overcame me, similar to that body feeling you get from a strong what? nicotine rush. I then was floating in my room and felt a presence right behind me, but didn't think much of it. It wasn't a good presence, more of a demonic one. Despite there being my family in the home awake, I didn't see anyone there, and only the light that illuminated <laughs> just, the stairway was on. Like, Everything also had a blue tint to it, and I could see clearly in the dark. That's him. I had to swim through the air to be able to move, and went through my door, and swam my way downstairs. I decided like to go up, and through the ceiling, the and then through the roof, and explore this new plane of existence. However, as I went through the ceiling, I saw this creature rushing towards the stairs, and it stopped as soon as I stopped moving Ooh. to see it. I could only see the back of it from the right side Beauty. of it since it was blocked by a wall, but it had yellow skin, pointy, elongated ears, a tail that's medium-sized, and it appeared to be as tall as I was at the time, 5'6". Mm. I stared at it for a few seconds, frozen in fear, and before I knew it, I was awake back in my bed. I looked at my clock and several minutes had passed by. I don't know what to think of that, but it was an interesting experience. Oh. Oh. When I was eight years old, I didn't have any friends. My mom wouldn't ah, allow me to play outside with the other kids in our neighborhood. And go. It was always alone. The only playmates I had were my cousins and my brother. But it took three hours and 25 minutes to get to their houses. One day, my mom let me play outside with the kids in our neighborhood for the first time because she was going somewhere, maybe to work or to run Welcome. errands. I got my dolls and other toys and was excited to play with the kids outside. When I got there, no one wanted to play with me. The attempt was useless, but then someone approached me. Oh. He had puppy eyes and was cute. Ew. We quickly became playmates. He's Even though he was a boy, him. he would join me for tea parties with my He's dolls. Pale, he he also invited me to play no. with him at his house. Don't. But I was confused because his house looked old and abandoned. Like it hadn't been cleaned up for almost 12 years. We decided to go play in his garden. When we got there, Dude, I come puked. On. I didn't know why at the time, but for some reason, I was disgusted. He didn't offer me water or anything. He just looked at me grinning and said, Next time, you're going to sleep here too. Oh. Two weeks after that upsetting experience, I went looking for him. A paper airplane flew to me out of nowhere. I picked it up, and when I opened it, I was shocked, scared, and sad. It was a newspaper clipping. The boy that I played with went missing nine years ago. I ran to my bedroom and I saw a shadow through my window. I looked at it closely and it was the boy. He was smiling. Today, I'm 19 years old and I still remember that part of my childhood so clearly. There's the house too. <gasps> no. One day, when I was about six or seven years okay, old, it's buff, my mom had gone to my older sister's recital in Georgia, and my dad was at work. He was a pilot for some airline. So she left me and oh. my older brother, who was only 12 at the time, at the sitter's house, which was a few blocks away from my house. My sitter, who I'm going to call Bev, was 19, and she was pretty much the best kind of sitter to a six to seven year old boy could ask for. She'd Guys, let us play games and stay up watching TV, TV as long as we stuff. didn't bother her while she was on the phone with her boyfriend. We were watching TV, and we could hear something scratching the paneling on the side of the house. Naturally, we blew it off as a stray animal. 
So we continued watching TV. About 30 okay, minutes to an hour later, Bev ran into yep, the living first. room and locked the front door and shut the blinds. We were curious as to what she was doing. Me and my brother, being kids, got scared and started crying. Then Bev said everything would be okay. It was just a peeping Tom. Well, so she took okay, us upstairs sure and we went to her parents' room with the Nintendo and some snacks. She said stay put and not to touch anything we didn't bring into the room. Not a minute later after she walked out of the room, we heard a loud crash and glass shattering in the room below us. The sicko had thrown a brick from the walkway through the guest bedroom window and managed to get in. I remember Bev running into the room and pulling us into the closet and telling us we were going to play a game of hide and seek and to be very quiet. She got out of the closet and locked it from the outside latch and disappeared. Several minutes passed and we could hear a grown man screaming. Come out, come out wherever you are. I only want to play. Then I heard what sounded like water running in the bathroom across from the closet. Then it shut off. And I heard Bev yelling something at the man. It was something like, the police are on their way. You better get out of my fucking house now. But okay, then we guys, could hear um, loud, heavy swears. footsteps sprinting out of the room. Guys, if this And then swears, sirens watch, wailing in the I'm distance. Swearing. Bev shrieked, and we heard a loud thud on the ground below us. Sorry, this is not family. Bev Friends had managed to find an old wooden bat. As the man turned a corner to go out the front door, Bev swung the bat as hard as she could, knocking the man to the floor. Nice. Dazed, he got up and tried chasing her outside. But the cops had already arrived and tackled <laughs> the man on sight. My mom came home immediately and took me, my brother, and Bev back to my house. A few years later, she explained that the man was a known sex offender and had escaped from prison. In the report, he was said to be carrying a rather large knife in his pocket and had a Saturday night special tucked away in the waist of his pants. Dude, I hate... No! It happened last year, 2018, when I was still in my second year of high school. It was earlier March that I was in school. We were just playing some quiz game on my laptop. I connected it to the projector for all of them to see. But then suddenly, the school's fire alarm went off. They said this isn't a drill, but rather a maniac just entered our school Imagine. with a gun. So Imagine all of us closed the door and the window to our classroom and switched off the lights. It was all silent, like you could hear a pin drop to the floor. At first, I wasn't panicking that much. But it all started to happen when a gunshot was heard from the distance of our room. I can assume that he already knows that we're here. We are the closest room from the entry hall. Every single one of my classmates was crying. I'm the tallest and the oldest student of them all. I'm 16 and some of them are 15 and 14 and another one is 12. So I thought, I'm the oldest. I should protect them. And I was like that. So then I grabbed the fire extinguisher in our room. Because every single room in my school has a fire blanket and a fire extinguisher, just in case of a fire. I had a stupid plan inside my head that I'll spray him with the fire extinguisher. So, then I opened our room door, and I came across it. He was a middle-aged man, wearing a white tank and black slacks. He was holding a 44 Magnum caliber revolver. Ooh. At first, we were having a quick draw match like that he grabbed his gun first and pulls the trigger i can feel my heart beating fast and just then he aimed the gun at me but it didn't shoot at all he forgot to cock his gun so then it's my chance to hit him with a fire extinguisher and knock him out after that the police arrived and every student was reunited with their family and still i'm wondering what could have happened if he didn't forget to cock his gun oh, and shoot me God. first. That would be a disaster. Okay, I think that's it. Let's go, um, hold on, guys. So let's slide that over there. And now we're going to be enjoying the nice thing. You know...
on rainbows. Let's see if this is right. Okay, so we got this. Let's just see it. Okay guys, I think that's it for this video. Um, if you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. Um, yeah, that was it for the video. If you had any discomfort watching that, I'm sorry, that was your choice. And bye, see you in the next one. Wait, did I not stop? I'm so sorry.